services on today. We are so delighted that you have chosen to view our services. It is our absolute desire that you are illuminated and inspired by the spoken word of God. Well, as I said often to our congregation, let's get it on. Let's get right into the word of God. Okay,
to do all sorts of all things, God is looking for a covenant-minded believer who operates yes. in faith. You can cry all day long, but if you lack certain biblical principles, you will not experience God's influence in your life. All right. You hear people say, I'm blessed and highly favored. Are you really? Or is that just a constraint? How do you say it? Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, we all know the Christian jargon, the, the, the Christian nomenclature. We, we know how to say all these things, but are you really experiencing God's influence in your life? God is a faith and covenant God. Get that. God is a what? Faith and covenant. He has committed his influence to move on our behalf by establishing a covenant between he and us through the blood of Christ. This is what the sacraments is all about. We celebrate them every, what, first Sunday? How many of y'all know that this is something that you can do at home on your own? Amen. Hallelujah. You can do this whenever you want to do this. This is what the sacraments is all about. Remembering and celebrating our covenant with God. Hallelujah. Pardon me for a moment. As I ponder what I'm about to say. We remember that he sacrificed himself. Isaiah says that he bare or bore our sins, carried our sorrows. Yes, yes. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. He was wounded for our chastisement, uh, uh, for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Uh, uh, is it, is it, let me try to see whether or not I can find one or two people that are so gracious and, and so delighted that he bared our sins on the cross. And he didn't just stop there, but he spared the penalty and went to hell. And God raised him from the dead three days later. And so when we sit down and we take the sacraments, he says, this is my body. Drink it in remembrance. So what am I remembering? I'm remembering that day when he was on the cross and they spread his arms out. Yes. Crucifixion is a horrible, slow death. In order for his arms to be placed on each side, they had to pull them out of joint. Literally, 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 you, you, you asphyxiate. Your heart bursts. It's a slow death. This is the reason why the Romans would come by and, 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 and break their, their legs. Pre-adventure someone would go and pull them off because it was such a slow death. Yes. Can somebody say he did it all for me? So we're so 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 we're talking about God's influence. Let's go back to the, the to the basic principles of our relationship with Him. That is a covenant relationship. Are y'all following so far? Here? And so not only did he bear our sins and, and was raised from the dead, he took his blood and presented it in the holies of holies in heaven. Yeah. That established our forgiveness. That caused him to not just forgive my sins, oh God, glory, but to remit yeah. my sins. Yeah. Pastor, what's the problem? What, what, what's the difference in forgiving and remitting? Remitting means that God's going to deal with you as though you've never sinned. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, can somebody give God yes. a Yes, glory. Yes. If God's dealing with you, yes. Lord, yes. Oh, man, hallelujah. Not only did he present his blood in heaven to, 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 to for the remission of our sins, but it was his blood that established a new covenant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luke 22, 19 and 20 says, And he took bread, and he gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which was what? Given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also, the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament. The word testament means will. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Are you glad to know that this is a different kind of a estate planning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He 
he's the only one I know that was, was, was buried and was raised from the dead to make sure that we are exposed to his inheritance. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What shall I say to our inheritance? To make sure that the covenant is fixed and on our behalf. So it says this cup is a new testament in my blood which is shed for you. Through him we have entered into a new covenant that positioned or repositioned us to experience God's influence. However, how many of y'all knew there was a however coming? <laughs> however, and I want to pause because I do need you to get this one point. Because this is a defining point in our lives. Most believers need to get this established. However, as in any covenant relationship, both parties involved have a part to play. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. See, this is where the rubber meets the, meets, the, meets the road. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's part is his sovereign influence. Our part is our obedience through faith. Yes. yes. You, you know, you can, you can quote all the Christian cliches all you want. But if you're not lined up with God, you're not going to experience the greater part of his influence. You may experience the outcome of some of your wisdom and worldliness, uh -huh. but it's not God's influence. It's amazing to me how individuals can say that God blessed them with something, but they can't afford to keep it. Okay, see, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, that's not it. I didn't mean it. Right. God bless you with a car. You can't afford a car. When God blesses you, there's no sorrows. Amen. See, we've got to realize how to position ourselves to really, somebody say, really experience God's influence. Yes. 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 I'm not talking about this, this uh, super uh, 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 illusionary faith. I'm talking about a real experience where you know that it was God that opened the door that no man could open, where you knew that it was God that moved on your behalf. You didn't tell anybody about, anybody about your circumstance or your situation. It was just a matter of prayer. But God moved and, and God established and God met every one of your needs. Yes. <laughs> to the extent that we know and are obedient to his word determines his influence. Yeah. To the extent that we what? I say this a thousand times, you will never live above what you know. So if you don't know the word of God, then how can you have faith? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you don't know, then you don't have the faith. And if you don't have the faith, how are you pulling on the covenant of God? And if you're not pulling on the covenant of God, how is God influencing your life? See, a lot of times, man, we sound real good, Elder. We talk a good game. We can ta 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 ta. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time to grow up. Yeah. It's time to move in that place where we confidently know, man, it was God that moved. Yeah. Where we confidently have a healthy expectation, I know he's going to move. Yeah. Where we find ourselves right in the middle of it all and say, I know that my God lives. And yeah. I know that he is moving on my behalf. Well, you say sometimes when people say God's doing this and God's doing that, have you ever paused for a moment and asked him, well, what do you believe concerning the word of God on your behalf? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, what are you really standing on? What do, you, what, do, what do you really believe? Are you believing songs and cliches? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Or are you intellectually understanding this covenant relationship between you and God. And you went to the covenant and you found where it declared a move of God on your behalf. Yes. And you standing on that word. Yes. Are y'all with me here so far? Yes. So, to the extent that we know and are obedient to his word determines God's influence. Isaiah 119 says, if you be what? Willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. When we are willing and obedient, we can be assured of his influence to move in our lives. This is because our faith and expectation is anchored in him, who is the ultimate promise keeper. God is the ultimate, what? Promise keeper. The Bible tells us over in Hebrews chapter 10, look at this man. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Can I pause and teach you a little bit here? This term way is actually...
actually, you know, back in the day, they used to talk to, talk to, they used to refer to each other. This is someone who is of the way. Uh -huh. Come on, so, so, so this, this particular term, the way, is relative to blood. The, the way is that place of blood that exists in between the sacrifice. So, so, so when he says that we are entered in by this new living, by this living way, he's talking about the blood. Who glory, I can't wait till I get down here and talk about Abraham. Because a a Abram cut a beast of burden in half and, and made a covenant with God and, and, and God waited for him to, to cease from his own work, hallelujah, and operate in faith. Sometimes God has to allow you to go to sleep in order for you to cease from your own labor. He allow Abram to go, because Abram out there chasing buzzers. You don't need to do that. Relax. Rest in the covenants of God. So he rested and when he woke up, he saw footprints mm -hmm. in between the two halves of the beast. So he found footprints walking in the way. See, this is why Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Can I go ahead? one thing in there. Which he has consecrated for us the veil. That is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw nigh with a true heart and what? Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Watch this verse. <coughs> let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. So, so, so if I'm really, if I'm really interested in walking in the influence of God and having God to move in my life, it starts with my understanding of God's covenant nature. Yes. Amen. Y'all follow me so far? Oh, here we go. Consider Abel. The blood covenant and his obedience were the anchors in his relationship with God. His, his understanding as a businessman of how individuals are buying together when there is an established covenant. Yeah. Whew, glory to God. In Genesis, we find God choosing Abraham to be the vehicle <coughs> that he would use to bring the law through and bless all of humanity. He told him that he would bear a son and bless his lineage, although he and his wife were not able to conceive. However, through the process of time, Abraham needed his heart and faith anchored. He asked God an interesting question. He asked God, he said, Lord, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? How will I know, God? I need an insurance program, God. I, I need, let, let, watch this now. I need something to anchor both my heart and my soul. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. See, one of the things that the sacrament should do is anchor your soul. Why does my soul need to be anchored? Well, what's in my soul? My will, my intellect, and my emotions. Those are the very things that compromise my faith. Why? Because my intellect assesses my situation and determines that it can't work. Our intellect will always lead us to doubt. Right. Yeah. Why? Because our intellect is based on what we can do and what we see. And so very often, it is our emotions and our intellect that compromises our faith. That's why the Bible says, believe in your heart and shall not doubt. So believing in my heart is the believing in my heart, independent from my senses. That's faith. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own peanut. And so, and so now, now my heart needs to be anchored in the word of God in the face of my circumstances yes. and in the face of my situation. You see, Abram's situation was the fact that his wife and he could not conceive. They didn't have a IRA. They didn't have all that stuff back then. They couldn't just make an appointment go to the doctor and say, look, man, I'm 90 years old. I need a little help. Not God not only God not only fixed that 
situation, but it caused Sarah to hit the rewind button. Yeah. Yeah. Here, they, here they go over here with King uh, uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and and uh Abram is, 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 is cruising through there with his wife. And King Abimelech looked at her and was like, whoa, boo. Ha -ha. Lord have mercy. Oh, that's all, that's all, that's all. <laughs> and, and so Abram, you know, not understanding the, the, the fullness of God and the power of God, you know, he, he, he you know, Abimelech approached him and said, yo, son, who's that? He realized, that's my sister. You know, and so I like said, okay, well, guess what? Your sister Nessie, what? Mm -hmm. My boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to take that up all of you, bro. <laughs> and God visited him in a dream and told him, that's that man's wife, man. And he said, well, because of my innocence, I did it. And so God released the man of God mm -hmm. and said, hey, but wait, why are you lying? But my point is this. God, re God reversed the, 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 the aging process to the point where Sarah became even more beautiful than she was naturally. Yeah. All right. yeah. But yet still, she needed to conceive. The, his, his circumstances was that. What's your circumstance? Mm -hmm. Is your faith anchored in the word of God or is your trust in your flesh? See, to get God's influence in your life, you've got to get off of what you can assess with your natural mind and your natural abilities and trust God at his what? Word. Yes, amen, amen. amen. Can, 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 can I go ahead? So God cut a covenant with him that anchored his faith and established God as his sufficiency. So here's, and, and here's, this, this, this thing is going on over, over a couple of years. God's interacting with Abram. Uh, one time he, he, he talked to him and said, listen, man, you guys are going to bear a child. And Sarah kept Sarah in the background, and she back there laughing. Like, he said, really? Dude, really? And you God, too, so I know you know. Really? <laughs> so God takes the man out and gives him a vision. Let me say something to you. Vision is foresight. With insight. God gives them a vision. Vision causes you to be pregnant with all the possibilities of God. All right. Did you get what I just said? So this is, this is why vision is so important in your life. Because, because before God moves you someplace, he wants you to see it. Isn't that what he did to the children of Israel? He took them over there and said, look at the land. Watch out now. Watch out. And so he says, look up to the stars. He says, you can't count them. He says, so shall I see it be. But God understood he was dealing with a what? A businessman. Yeah. Right. He says, I'll tell you what, Abel. This is what we're going to do. I know how to anchor your faith. Let's cut a cup. He's got Abel's attention now. Because Abel understand. And, 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 and it's interesting how the text reads. When God approaches him, he says to Abram, as for me, now that term, as for me, binds him to Abram. Right. The covenant binded God to Abraham. <laughs> Abraham realized that if I can, if boy, if I if I can get him mm -hmm. in the blood covenant, mm -hmm. he's absolutely attached and connected mm -hmm. to me. Going back to what I said earlier. He gets this big beast of burden. Cuts the beast in half. See, this wasn't a little small burden. This is a big beast. One side, one side. Here's the blood. Church, listen to what I'm going to say to you right now. This could be life changing. Very often, the next move of God is precluded or it, 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 it is precluded by an act of obedience. The next move of God in your life is going to be released by your obedience. All right. If you need God to move in areas of your life, your question should be, God, what shall I do? Yeah. Obedience releases the covenant. 
And so, and so often we're wanting God to move. And God is saying, I will move if you move. I'll, I'll do this because I'm in covenant with you. We have a contract. My part is my sovereign influence. Your part is obedience. How many of you all, I'm a, how many of you all need God to move? Amen. Hallelujah. This is the prayer right here. God, what do you want me to do? That's it. God, what do you want me? Show me what you want me to do. Further in this relationship, here's God and say, okay, Abram, I tell you what, let's move this thing to the next level. I'm going to really find out whether I am the preeminent one in your life. Take thy son, thine only son, because at this point God had given him the promised boy and had told him, through Isaac thy seed shall be. Take this son of yours and sacrifice him. And call Abram to exact the highest level of obedience. Oh, beloved, hear what God is saying today. He is the preeminent one in your life. Nothing in your life should be off limits to the altar of God. Yeah. Yeah. Your sons, your daughters, your child, your nephews, none of them should be off limits to the altar of God. If God tells you to let it go, if God tells you to walk away, obey God. The thing that you hold on to will be a curse if you don't let it go. Jesus. Oh, my God, now listen to me. Yes. See, we want God's influence, but we often intellectually don't know how to invoke it. Let me finish. Let me go. Let me go. Y'all get this thing so far here, man? So God cut a covenant with him that anchored his faith and established God in his life as God, as his sufficiency. And his obedience to sacrifice, his son was the ultimate expression of obedience. This guarantee God's influence and anchored Abraham's faith and soul in God as a promise keeper. That is the reason why God encourages us to take the sacraments every so often to reconnect our soul, to anchor our soul in our covenant relationship with Almighty God, to remember what he did on the cross, to remember what he did in hell, to remember what he did on our behalf in heaven. Do this in remembrance of me. The book of, book of Hebrews references Abraham and he frames our faith in God as a promise keeper. God is the ultimate promise keeper because he cannot lie, nor will he remain on his word. Amen. Lining our lives up with his word guarantees his influence. Look at your life. If there's an area of your life that you're, that you're not exceedingly experiencing God's influence, there is a good chance that disobedience is lurking in the background. Obedience define, defines preeminence. When God is preeminent, you will go to the ends of the world to obey him. When you are preeminent, God will take second place to your obedience. I'm going to try to get this thing shouting back up for y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's okay, man. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting it? It's time to line up. Somebody say, it's time to line up. <laughs> we want God to move in our lives. We want God to bless us. And, and we want God to do this and do that. But we're out of position. We want the influence of God. But are you in position to experience God's influence in your life? Look at Hebrews. I kind of had to chop it up because it was a long text, amen? And we desire that every one of you do show the same Hebrews 6, 11 uh, through 20. He says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the what? Full assurance of hope to the end. I said this one time before, when you look at your hope, hope is always in the future. Hope is the blueprint of faith, so you need hope. But your hope needs assurance, Amen. He says that you be not what slothful, but followers of them who what? Through faith and patience inherit what? The promises. Anybody here 
been trying to inherit the promises. Hallelujah. That's God's influence on your life. Amen. Lining your life up, man, with God's influence, I'm telling you, it will change your life. Y'all listen with me so far. So when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Who, whose integrity is greater than God's? So, so if you get God's word on it, you already... You, you, you got him bind by the covenant. That's a, you, that, that doesn't say, that's God. No, that's biblical. Saying, surely blessings I will bless thee, and multiply I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. In other words, once the blood is covenant, but once the blood has been cut, what are we arguing about? Once the paperwork has been signed, what are we arguing about? We're all now just committed as partners in this thing. Come on, Smite. We're in God willing to abundantly show unto his heirs of promises the immutability of his counsel, the unchangeableness of his counsel, counsel confirmed it by the oath. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, he might have a strong consolation who had fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as a what? Anchor. Of our what? Of our souls. Which steadfast entereth into that within the veil. Church, listen to what God's saying this morning. When our faith is anchored in the word of God, our faith follows our forerunner Jesus into the presence of God where there's absolute assurance of his influence in our lives. This moves us to a place of expectation because we are in covenant with God. His influence has been released on our behalf. We position ourselves to experience it through our knowledge, faith, and obedience. This lines our lives up with his will and influence and moves us to a place of expectation. Because I'm walking with the king. I'm walking according to his word. I can expect God to heal. I can expect God to meet my needs according to his riches in glory. You remember, oh, hallelujah, when Paul wrote that particular text to the church of Philippi, he was talking about a church that operated and blessed him. He says, God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. In Christ Jesus, he was talking about a church that was lined up with the will of God. You hear people always say, God will meet all my needs. He will if you are willing and obedient. Yes. All right. Otherwise, you're on your own intellect trying to figure it out yourself. Yes. Anybody get tired of trying to figure things? Yes. Yes. Where you just say, you know what, I, I am trying to invoke the power and, and, and the influence of God. I'm going to walk this thing. I'm going to be willing and obedient. I'm going to expect God to move and open doors. I'm going to expect the leverage to be on my side. We then can what? Expect his influence to flow in our lives. We'll close out over here. Psalm 62. It says, My soul waiteth thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. Beloved, where is your expectation on today? Where is your joy on today? Do you expect God to move. Let me see one. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you expect God to move? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh God. Glory. Yeah. That's one hand. You expect God to move. Yeah. Yeah. With the other hand, the question I'm going to ask you is do you know why? Do you know why? Yeah. Glory. Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah. The, 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 the why is proclaimed in the covenant. Yeah. Got it now? See, sometimes we expect him to move. Why? Why would God move? What part of the covenant are you standing on? That sounds really big. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. What part is articulated in that word that 
God has illuminated to you that moves your understanding from head knowledge to reveal knowledge. Reveal knowledge produces a force called faith. You only experience God's influence in your life when your head checks out and your heart checks in. Amen. Because you know I'm walking in obedience to the covenants of God. And God is absolutely guaranteeing the covenant because he's already made an oath with me. I got his word on that. Someone comes to your house and you sign a contract with them and they don't do what they're supposed to do. Do you question their ability or do you question the contract? You question the contract. Leverage is in the contract. Are you glad that we have a covenant? Yeah. Everlasting covenant. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Because I understand and walk in that covenant, I expect God to move. Yeah. If that's you, come on, give him a hand clap and a prayer. something that I haven't done before to get God to do something that he's never done before. I'm going to say that again. Possibly I need to do something that I've what? Never done before. To get God to move in a way in my life that he's never did before. If I'm doing the same thing and expecting God to do something different, there's a good chance it's not going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. Come on. Are y'all getting this thing? How many of y'all want God to move? I'm just waiting on the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. How many of you need God to do something big? Let me see. I need, I need to do something. Stand up and Jesus. this thing. I need God to do something big. I need God to do something big. I need, I need God to do something exceptional. Lift those hands right now. Hallelujah. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. In order for God to do something big, you have to do something big. So the prayer is this. What, what, what's just the prayer? God, show me. Abraham, I'm going to do something big in your life. I need you to do something big. Hallelujah. If you, if you want to invoke a great move, you have to sow a great act. What you've been doing is not enough to invoke the greater move that you expect God to do in your life. You're going to have to step out of the box and obey God in doing something that your mind may not assess to, that your mind may not understand. Why would God tell a man to sacrifice his own son? 
It was an extension of Abram's faith. Yes. God wanted to do something exceptional in his life. So he required an exceptional level of obedience. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, show us. Glory. Man, oh man, I say some. Show us the thing that you need us to do. Glory. In some of you all's lives, it, it may be something very, very subtle or something very simple that God wants you to do that's going to release the flood. Yeah, of Lord. Thank you, Lord. It could be an act that releases the anointing on your life. God, I've never, I've never met you before. Every day in the morning, God. So, so, so that's something different. I'm going to do that, God, because you told me to meet you here. I'll guarantee you that the power of the Lord of God will rise on your life. Yes. Because you're going to do something different. Glory, glory. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I need you to move in my life economically. Then that means that you're going to have to sow a seed that's bigger than what you've ever sowed. You're going to have to get out of the box and step away from your thinking. The prayer is, God, show me. Yeah, God. Can somebody just say, God, show me. God, show me. Show me. God, yeah. show me. The thing that you want me to do that will release the floodgates of your influence on my life. And I fell not to give you the glory. In Jesus' name. You received that. Come on and give him a, a hand clap. Now. Hallelujah.
We thank you, Lord God, for the mighty man of God. Our pastor that brings the word, God, is on time, Lord God, for this local assembly. Now, God, you place in this spirit, Lord God, to remind us of the challenges, to bring forth those things in our lives, God, that you desire for us to release to your hands, God, that you may put something greater in our hands. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, oh God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Speak all the spirit. Lord, we look at the moves, God, in greater ways, God. But what we're doing right now is not enough, God. To reap the harvest that is set before us. God, help us to position our lives, God. To receive the great anointing that you desire to release over our lives. That we may make a greater impact yeah, Lord. against the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. God, that your anointing may rest on us in such a way, God. That those that come in our very presence may feel a release because of the anointing that is on our lives. God, give us a hunger. A hunger, God, for the greater works that you've sent for our hands to do. God, we thank and we praise you. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, let us never leave your presence. Let our lives, Lord God, be a life, a beacon of light to someone else. That they may ask, God, of the witness that abides on the inside of us. God, we bless you and we praise you. We honor you this day. And we all say, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go out and give someone a hug. Oh, amen. Well, praise God. If there's anyone that desires to join up with the Living Word Christian Ministry, amen. Thank you for viewing our services on today. We absolutely desire that you are touched and impacted by that Word of God. If you're in the Warlock area, we welcome you to visit us here at the Living Word of God, where the anointing abides, where the Word is strong, and where individuals love you from the time you come in until the time you leave. Again, man, we are certainly glad that you viewed our services on today, and we thank God for it.